right, guys. Hey, thanks for joining me today. Um, I, I'm doing the intro after I made the video already because I didn't like the other intro. And uh, so bear with me. We'll get through it. We're just going to go quickly. Basic theory of operation on the 20 series and 30 series, the difference of the generations of steering. And then just a quick issues or, or common common complaints and a couple basic diagnostics for them systems. Um, so let's spin you around. So your 4020 is simple. Uh, both tractors, uh, all, all old roll crop tractors until they went to external cylinders up front had this style front axle. You got two pistons. This is your front axles right underneath here. Um, so this is behind them side frame, right, right in that area. And it's just basically two pistons and they move opposite of each other, which creates a rotation effect on that gear because it's a rack and pinion. And at the bottom of that gear is the arm where your tie rods hook that pull your steering wheel, your wheels left and right. These are the two lines that come along the engine. Uh, when your tractor's at one piece, they come along uh, this pipe, and we'll go over to the tractor and look, and they, they come across this pipe and down. And uh, so they alternate between pressure and return, whether you're turning left or right. <clears throat> the steering meter is, um, so if, if you did this, it's basically like a 4010, um, hydraulic outlet out the back. These, these components are, are straight identical. They cross right over. Um, the theory of operation as far as these valves are the same. They got pressure return, return pressure, and so that's how you're alternating your pressure through the lines. Uh, you got the piston and this collar. This collar activates these valves. This piston moves the oil. Um, you can kind of see here that you got pressure oil in, and then your piston is moving the trapped oil out, and then the blue oil is coming back to return, and then your red oil is pressure from the, the system pressure of the tractor. So it's kind of a complicated way or a busy way for a simple system. Um, John Deere was very good. They had very good engineers um sometimes they got a little over engineered so your two pipes come here and they hook to here when you pull this side screen off for diagnosing so common symptoms of these older 20 series was it steers great to the right but then coming left is both hands and it's very slow or i'm going down the road and if i go to correct the wheel to the left um the tractor will dart once in a while um, them are very common issues of the valve, steering valve, but if you cap these lines and then cap these lines, if you cap the top two lines from your steering with the engine off, the steering wheel should turn just a little bit and be solid, dead solid. If it turns and kind of hits, but then you can creep it on down, it's leaking. Uh, and then if you can just kind of keep going, then it's really leaking. If you cap these two lines, jack up the front end and come out here with a bar, they'll move just a little bit because of mechanical slop through the system, but it should deadhead pretty solid and, and not move. If you can just hold tension and they creep, then they're leaking past the pistons back here. So overall, a fairly complicated, simple system. Um, your 4430 is the same front axle theory of operation. You got the two pistons that turn the, the spindle. And, uh, you know, with this front piston system, it's very reliable. Very rarely will you pull them pistons out. It's more common that you just got to put the seal up around that swing arm up in there. So the 30 series and later had the four lines up here. Uh, and coming down instead of two lines and then splitting off the floor under the underneath there um, And so this shuttle valve replaces all that mess All it is is just a single spool valve Sliding back and forth So when you turn your steering wheel to the right your steering wheel is just turning a gear pump You know, you got the two gears 
turning. I had a video from the 4640 showing that pump redoing this steering sector. So as long as you're turning to the right, you're metering oil. So you got, you know, right pressure left, however it is up here. Um, and so when you're turning the wheel to the right, as long as you're pumping oil, quote unquote, pumping oil, it's going to put this shuttle over and it's going to make a couple pressure and a couple return. When you stop, you stop moving oil. So then everything balances in here and that spool will shoot back to neutral, stopping locking the hydraulic oil, trapping it. And then if you turn left, well, then it, as long as you're turning left, it does the same thing, only the opposite is right. This system is much more reliable. You don't really hear of the 30 series or laters tending to dart to the ditch or anything like that. Um, the most common thing with this block is it starts to get a little internal leakage. And so while the tractor's doing stationary work, running auger, blower, bagger, whatever, is the wheels will creep on you throughout the day. That's a very common leakage through this block. If that block gets very bad, then you get hot spot, and it, you know he'll become a hot spot, can start to heat the oil, or he can start to rob oil from your outlets or three point. The common issues with the steering box in here is oil leaking up the steering shaft, which then you'd pull the system out like I did in the 4640 video, or um, this return line right there, um, which goes along the transmission case here, behind here, through a grommet, and into the center to your steering sector. That return line, just a soft rubber hose, they've been very known to, so if they're getting weepy underneath here, that's when you get weepage along here. If it breaks underneath there, that's when you get oil just pouring out into your cab. Um, so that's, just kind of a very quick, basic, rough sketch of how the systems operate and, uh, and a few diagnostics. Let's uh, roll the footage of tearing that selector valve down. All right, let's disassemble this thing. <clears throat> so I just took this back cover off, took the cotter key out. Let's spin this nut off. Normally you gotta hold the shaft but I saved the last exciting, exciting turn for you guys. I know, I know. You know, to be a hero, it's not always that easy. And I hate to use the term hero loosely, but uh, this piece is gonna stay with us for right now because it's locked in to our collar. So we don't wanna try and force this collar out. There's a jam nut and a nut on each side. One there, one there. I am going to take them out now just because if I can help reduce any risk of damaging them, <clears throat> uh, when taking this collar out. Now we got that collar. So here's where it gets interesting. <clears throat> so I took the guts out of the back here, the collar, and then all I did was take these six bolts out and separate these two. I did it over a frying pan, one to collect the oil and two, this little ball it sits against here in operation and it fits in this cavity here during operation and uh, that way any of this stuff this stuff falls out it falls into the frying pan and not into the pot and that's important we don't want anything in the pot at this point you have an old 10 series selector valve or early 20 series selector valve if you've ever worked on one of them you have a simple push here and that unseats a ball to allow oil to flow and then you got your 
uh, get them out with a pair of pliers. But um, yeah, so at this point we can we can pull these rods out. Probably be easier with pliers. Um, but we're trying to make we're trying to make film history here, you know. So you pull them rods out, and then we can come to the front and uh, take these poppets out and just keep tearing it down and pull that out and and then eventually we'll clean stuff up. So I'll catch you at the next step. <clears throat> so um, I pulled the pins, I finished pulling the last pin out <clears throat> and I pulled all the poppets and springs and so you get a poppet then another pop it and a funny little tapered spring um, like that is going to come out and a little a little ball is going to come out and we'll worry about how it all goes together later we don't care about that right now um, so you had this last plate remaining here this again is where you put it over the over the drain pan and you can see that piston move so when you turn the wheel that piston's moving and it's going to squirt oil out the back opening here and push a bunch of oil out and when you go back the other way uh it's going to squirt oil out this valve so you keep that try and keep it over the drain pan unless you got a a parts washer or somewhere else that you're doing it where you don't care like you can let a little oil spill um but we can, we can thread him out, and as you thread him out, he pushes this back plate off. And, uh, and then we can do that, and then he just comes apart like that. Fairly simple. And there you just got your housing and your steering shaft up in there. Easy peasy. So the steering shaft now had a snap ring right here, and you take the little snap ring off and you give it a little push because you're just fighting this outer seal here <clears throat> but now it it's stuck down in there and you can't get it out the bottom and there's no so I take a half inch extension and I go oh because sometimes when you're taking stuff apart and you get, this is hard to do one-handed, and you, you start to move something and then it stops moving, you have a natural tendency to think you're doing something wrong, but it's just, uh, it's just snagging in some seals in there. No big deal, nothing's getting hurt, and it's just an O-ring that's catching on here. And uh, so yeah. And for the most part, uh, that's all the super technical stuff. We'll, uh, we'll spin out these fittings because we've got in our kit, in our kit, we got new o rings to put on all our fittings. Everything goes for a soak and a rinse, and then, uh, some other day, some other time, maybe 10 minutes from now, maybe two weeks from now. We don't know what the time frame is because there is no time frame on social media. Um, we'll, we'll try and remember how everything was. Ha! So going back together, take your time. Uh, the best thing, you know... Uh, it, if you're going to tackle this yourself, um, I, I would get a copy of a book, a John Deere service manual, and follow the book, because there's a lot going on here. Um, but you got an O-ring up in here, you got one here, a little packing here, you got this O-ring here, you got these four, these two, and then in the barrel itself you've got two way up in here that are different sized and you got to be able to fish 
you know, you got to fish this O-ring and backup ring. Um, how deep is that? More than the, you know, halfway up your finger in a port you can't get your fingers into, and you have to manage to get the backup in ring first, and then get the O-ring in there without getting the O-ring stuck in between the backup ring. So when it goes into the slot, you don't end up with something like that. Um, and you'll tell because there'll be a hump in the bore, you'll see that the O-ring is just kind of sticking up in the sunlight and you're like, or in the flashlight and you're like, what the heck? And yeah, so it took me, in all honesty, it took me probably a half hour to get these two O-rings up inside that bore and verify that they are correct and in position and look good and everything is good. This is one of them jobs that you're not trying to impress anybody with timeliness. Um, but yeah, so once everything checks out, then we're just gonna simply ooh, stand this valve up and uh, we'll put our seats and balls and springs and then our caps and our side covers over here and then uh, work on our check valve. Uh, and then this, this assembly will go down in the bore and uh and then we'll get we'll get all this stuff back into these spots and go from there like playing plinko yeah big money big money come on big money <clears throat> I'm going to stop and you'll always notice we have, we're never too far from a tube of grease because when putting big packings in a big groove like that you always put a several swipes of grease um, and the same thing on some of these guides before I put them in I give them a good coating of grease because the grease helps kind of keep things in place believe it or not um, sometimes sometimes there's other times that it'll allow an o-ring to slip better but like on the end of the steering shaft here you got two double lip seals one lip down and one lip up and yeah you fill your finger up with grease and and really get it down inside there don't be scared to get grease on the bushing in there um, and the same on these chamfered ends of these shafts. Grease them up good before you shove them, shove them through. And uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm gonna shut the camera off so I can do this. And uh, we'll get this into here. And then we have to clock this piston. If this check valve is not enhanced, if this check valve is not in the right spot, um, it won't work. <laughs> Yay! Right here is a little tiny, tiny, tiny flapper ball and check spring. There's a little tin flapper that holds it and a little tiny spring, like a pen spring, and a little BB that are in there. And this nipple is going to go into here. Um... So I literally just fill that up with grease. So if I move this housing, you don't end up hearing that famous tink, tink, tink across the floor. Um, and so, yeah, just a simple thing. I know I'm, it seems like I'm taking big steps here, um, but it's, it's actually taking, it's a very slow process. Um, this stuff goes kind of quick because you just put all this stuff back in. I use a lot of grease. There's a little check ball and a little tiny pen spring and a little piece of tin in there. I mean, three super tiny components. So I smear that hole with grease so they can't drop. This spring and pin and everything is just coated in grease. So it kind of stays there. So if I tip this assembly to bring it on, this little ball doesn't roll out. And then you hear ting, ting, ting across the floor. 
uh, installed the piston, and we're pretty much, the pins, they, they sag a little bit, you know, they're not fit tight in there, um, but we're fairly horizontal to the housing with this fitting gives us our top. <clears throat> so we're about one o'clock, then pins are horizontal. They were just there for reference, just so you could see. And uh, so I think now, right meow, is a good time that we'll slip this housing on and uh, kind of then start reassembling out here. And then eventually we'll get this on. I'll check with you in a few minutes. So, when, since we've last were together, I put this plate on. Remember, our check valve was at 1 o'clock. Slid this on, greased the pins and rollers up nice so they stay. Put the spring on, and then you thread this collar on. You can only be... That, that 1 o'clock... Um, it's either at one o'clock or it's 180 degrees off, you know, because you can see that, that you can only be here or you can be here. So that, that makes it really nice. Um, but they say to thread this on to get five sixteenths of clearance. And with an assortment of key stocks, eighth, three sixteenths, quarter, five sixteenths, three eighths, it makes quick go, no go gauges. So that just fits in there just perfect. So we're good on our 5 16 gap, and now we can continue on. Okay, so I stood this up and then brought this down on top, nice and careful. There's big dowel pins that help line it up, and just bring it on careful, get a couple bolts started just to help square it up. No forcing, just kind of let it go down. You're fighting against some of the springs and other things in here, and... Uh, Kind of lean on it a little bit, but so now we're here. Um, so now ho, 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 we'll put our we'll put our needles in. So you, you got our needles will go in here. Short ones on the bottom, long ones on the top. And then I will need both hands back to put these plates in. So this one would go in here, and then the other one would go on top. Or oh, I got them backwards. So this one is on the outside. This one's on the inside. Um, come on, you dirty little bugger. Yeah, I'm gonna set you guys down while I wrestle with this. I gotta get my flashlight here because I can't even see inside. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna put them in and then I'll need both hands to kinda, cause we're gonna put this collar on and engage the uh, these arms at the same time because they you can see how it rides right in there. So kind of a two-handed job. Okay, that went pretty good. There's a, a long side. So I had it right by going in with this guy first because um, you could see on this plate the wear was to this side and on that plate you could see the wear was to the back side. Does that told you? And then there's a long side and a short side to this welded pin. Um, so I'll just kind of see if I can one hand. Probably can't do this. I'm, I'm pulling this out a little bit here. And then move him to the side. Yeah. So you can see a long side and a short side. And the threaded hole. And then the offset. They're actually offset just a tiny bit. Um... Now can we go back together? So with this collar kind of being able to move in and out a little bit for me, we can get into that hole. Uh, I'm trying to use the wrong direction hand there. And then we'll push, put him on. Make sure this inner cup is the right way. Both sides. 
I wonder if I can get him to cooperate there a little bit. No, both sides are very similar looking. But, well, come on, you dirty little Frenchman. They're kind of similar looking, but one side makes a bearing race and the other side makes a spring retainer. Um, so just make sure that you get that on the right direction. We put him in. These guys are still kind of in place. Um, and then we have a spring <clears throat> and a nut. And this nut is going to go to five inch pounds of force so not a whole lot more than finger tight is what five inch pounds becomes um but i'll set you down so i can move that steering so i can well i can so then i can kind of crush him and get him to start so yeah yep that's what i need to do all right be back in a minute so dad's gonna set this one he <clears throat> Um, so you, you turn it to the right and hang the weight, and that keeps tension on the rod and the collar. Your dial indicator base needs to be rigid. This is the tool to hold your collar. And then you just willy-nilly, I'm kind of rough guess, two, four thousandths, doesn't really matter. You. One to three on the, the first one. You got to set the three thousandths on each one first. You set the three. No, you go from top left at three thousandths, top right at one thousandths, bottom left at three thousandths, and then bottom no. bottom right at three thousandths, the bottom left. So you just go it alternates. Over. You go clockwise, you know, starting with the top left. And it's one of them jobs that you just take your time because it's only a thousandths clearance. And when you tighten the jam nut, you might move that. Yep. So you use the pliers to kind of get a little snugness on the thread? Yep. Then it's homemade wrench. <laughs> it's a good good sacrifice of a cheap 716s. <clears throat> what have we got there? Two, right? Yeah, you're pretty solid two. Just yep. Solid two. Yep. I need one more thousands. So you gotta loosen it a little bit then? Yep. Oh, it looked like it jumped. Huh? Yeah, I gotta hold that. Oh, Oops. you hit the. I moved this. Oh, yeah. Make sure that's tight on the indicator. No, it's the spring here, this one. Because the. See, look at here. Oh, that one yeah, moved, dummy. This one. Yeah, there. That one. I want my height up. I want my height at the same level as the pins are, so you get a, a good reading. Oops! Slow down. So there you. Yep. Go the other way. Yeah, you're. Pretty much bang on three thousandths. Can you see it? Yep. I'm not in your way. I'll back up. But yeah, so that's the gist of that. And then you just take your time. And if it if it takes you 15 minutes, it takes you 15 minutes. If it takes you half hour, it takes you half hour. But they got to be dead on. Your indicator's moving. I'll I'll turn the camera off, and we can. Tighten that up, but I just had to finish the video. Well, look at it. <laughs> what? 
Now you're a little... Sh Why isn't it not moving around? Okay, I got a little bit. That's this one again. Is it side to side well, movement? Let's see if, it, if I put it over here. I just, so if it's too much side to side movement, well, we got these jam nuts and screw that we can tighten up and take some of that side to side out. Yeah. <clears throat> I can't demonstrate this live. Maybe I can try. Um, so you got a lot of lines with these flare fittings on the end. And they can be a real bugger when you got to get your hands in them tight spaces and try and get that stiff fitting. You can't quite turn it with your fingertips because you can only get a little bit on there. And so then you're doing 900 partial turns with a wrench. Put the pipe in your impact gun and lube it and start spinning it. And uh, obviously while you hold... While you hold the other pipe, you know, um, while you're hanging on to it, lube it, spin it, and she'll uh, she'll get spinning free and easy. Um, so then when you go to put it on, they just spin over nice, like that. That's what I'm trying to get to. That's going to be a whole lot easier getting that sucker started when you can't even get your hand in there. So there, there's your tip of the day. Uh, that tip, that, that's going to have you reducing swear words, probably 20 of them this week alone. All right. So we come over here. Um, the steering valve is in. Um, I wanted to do the hydraulic tests to it but dad says well if you do it right the first time then you don't have to worry about it um he just had knee surgery done and so this is his first day of getting out of the house in a week and a half almost two weeks and so yeah he uh he needed to do that so we got him an scv to work on at his bench um he could do the valves here for this while I fed the cows because we got to keep moving in the shop um, but it's it's in um, I just got to get these this little pipe here going and then uh, and start hooking up pipes and then I'll just leave the dash off until I can actually test it but yeah 